All right, here we go. We are on episode 15 of the Mary Podcast. I'm here with Michael Pierce, as always, and we have Mark Yonda. Everybody knows Mark from DeMaio Enterprises. Thanks, Mark, again for coming on. It's, it's been a while, so we're excited to get an update and uh, introduce you. Well, I guess not reintroduce you to the Mary, um, the network, because clearly... Everybody knows Mark. What's happening, Mark? Another day in paradise, man. Nice to see you guys. Cool, cool. <laughs> I guess Another first, day. what's that? No mask, no gloves. Oh, yeah, I- yeah. So, so if anybody follows Mark on Facebook, uh, I'm sure you have at least a few thousand friends around here. Everybody sees the daily post of your inspiring words and uh, the mask, the mask uh, post. How long, uh, how long we doing this for, you think? You know, I'm thinking out there yet? it might be indefinitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to get pretty hot. It's been 90 out, so oh, I guess right. if well, you can handle it. I think uh, last Friday or Thursday when it was like 100, well, maybe it wasn't 100. I thought it was 100. Mid-90s. And, yeah, it was really, really tough to breathe in that uh, at 19. Ask, yeah, Just put some holes through it. You know, that's a great idea. We just, <laughs> I think we take a paper punch. And, hey. um, I could I could put it in my monster, and yeah. that way I'm sure that I don't get infected. That's and that's true. Yeah, that was one of Michael's ideas. I think, <laughs> and I'll post that on Facebook just to give a demonstration of that idea. Maybe it'll catch on. <laughs> hey, uh, trending on 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 if and when we have a next outbreak, uh, we'll be expecting you wearing a like one of those CDC suits. <laughs> Don't get me. It's it's gonna be a real hot day then. <laughs> my, my my better half works at the VA. I bet I could get one of those suits, <laughs> asking some gloves, and show up on a job site just for you. <laughs> <laughs> the safest guy. Uh, in Kansas City. Are you sick? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm sick. You're right. <laughs> tell uh, tell people uh, who you are and what you do, what DeMaio Enterprises uh, services, everything like that. Let's give them an intro. Hey, guys. It's Mark Yonda with DeMaio Enterprises. We're a cabinet distributor uh, located in Kansas City, uh, servicing the lower 48, um, mm-hmm. distributing cabinets and uh, uh, luxury vinyl tile hardware uh, and, uh, and other assortments okay that kind of intro. <coughs> and, and uh, whoever's watching this video would be shocked because usually i talk for 20 minutes <laughs> <laughs> well pe- people like the info so you, you you've been in you've been in the game for uh, a long time right so um i mean so you've you've uh you've done a lot of stuff most a lot of it uh real estate related right through your career so i mean yeah. clearly yes. clearly you have expertise in a lot of you know uh these products and just real estate in general um you're an investor yourself so <laughs> just letting just letting the people know he's not only you know um a, a businessman but also he he knows what the investor would need because you know he he has the same needs himself <clears throat> so uh tell us uh i guess a little bit before we start um i don't know if we no i think the last time we had an interview with you i don't think we had it um i think it was maybe a few months back give us a a, a pandemic update maybe first general business how it's affected you just day to day obviously you know maybe some more protection and and uh some remote stuff but obviously you still have to be in the field doing measurements work with clients but also tell us from a uh, material standpoint uh and product standpoint how what's going on as of like today you know so uh in the uh, onset of this, we were uh, we had this uh, Chinese New Year, so that you know that sort of like in December, it went into January, and um, 
uh, first part of February, we ended up with this COVID. So they shut this thing down as far as import containers because of this, uh, this uh, COVID. And so we had a lot of containers uh, sitting in uh, Vietnam and Malaysia and China. Uh, and they were little, they were kind of reluctant about releasing it uh, for obvious reasons. They thought maybe that we might pass this on to others. So, you know, that was an immediate stall. Um, so normally it's about a 30 day window between say, uh, you know, January and February for the Chinese new year. And it, it could be from like the, uh, uh, 15th and 18th of January to like, uh, you know, the 18th to 20th of February. And then immediately following that, we had this COVID. So guys like myself, uh, guys, uh, you know, Ashley, my niece, the, that are involved with uh, moving containers, uh, you know, a little bit frustrated because no materials coming in. Mm -hmm. And then the material that does start to come in, the government's like, well, you know, we're concerned about passing this so we'd like to take an extra step and we would like to avoid any uh passing of this disease so we'll just hold these containers for um, automatic 30 days or 45 wow. days wow oh. That's and you know so the guys that we're working with overseas they're really concerned because they've got millions of dollars worth of product sitting either on the water or at the port um and um there's no business and the, and the U.S. is starting to shut down along with the rest of the world. And, um, you know, then it, uh, we have a, literally the market crashes. Um, I'm referring to the stock market. And everybody around is uh, running for cover. People are running down to the grocery store. There's no water. There's no toilet paper. There's no alcohol. There's... Uh, very little food on the shelves, so just a massive effort to take care of everybody, and we ran out of food. And then we start running out of building materials because the building materials are being held up at the port because of the concern of this COVID. And uh, guys like us were trying to service you guys with existing projects, and a lot of us are concerned about going outside, let alone working on the projects. So a lot of us said just went home and said, you know, we're working from home. We're not going to leave the house. We're going to we're going to hold steady and we're going to stay the course. But, you know, that's what we're going to do. So things started uh, uh, to get a little bit dicey, uh, you know, in March. And then, of course, everybody's announcing that, you know, it'd be really a good idea if we didn't go outside and uh, entertaining anything over the uh, a few people uh, is out of the question and you know we're just going to shut down the country and we're going to wait the thing out in the meantime uh, you guys are you guys didn't really slow down you kept calling us going hey where's my kitchen where's my uh, where's our vinyl at I mean we you know we get this big project down in Oklahoma we need to get the material for and we're just kind of concerned about the fact that uh, we're not seeing it and when are we going to see it? And the answer to that is, I don't know. And that doesn't work well in business. You know, it, it isn't a good thing to tell your customers you don't know. And one of the reasons that we didn't know is because we've never experienced anything like this. None of us have. This is, is very new to us. And uh, so a lot of things were going on with that. So initially, we had lack of material. Uh, we had lack of... Uh, interest because of this disease and uh so a lot of us were taking initial precautions um you know wearing a mask was is standard uh sop now gloves standard sop uh does it work i'm not a i'm not a uh, medical guy but uh i i think it works you know i i still uh fight with the daily you know we're still waiting on containers that uh, were, were held up a month and a half ago. They're still at port right now. They're, you know, like doing crazy things like ship six of them in, in one day and expect uh, uh, us to load all six of them in one day. Just not possible. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff like that that's going on that we're not accustomed to doing. And then in the, in the interim, there's a lot of us that are frustrated about the uh, unknown. And 
I have to say that through it all, it looks like we're going to come out of this just fine. It looks like it was only a, when I say only, I'm certainly not discounting the fact that we've lost several hundred thousand people to this thing, because that's a serious event for sure. But as far as the government, as far as the community is concerned, I think we've held in there long enough to prevent this thing from spreading. Ultimately, that's the whole thing. Um, and it, I'm, I've, I had, I've had uh, some of the most uh, challenging days of my life going through this thing, wanting to know if we were going to come out of this thing or not. And, and then in the last, uh, say, couple days, I mean, look at the market today at 27. Look when, it, look when this crashed. It was, uh, you know, 29. We're within a thousand and some change points of hitting this. We're right back up to where we, we were. So I think we're going to be okay. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it was definitely a short-term scare there. Um, and obviously, we'll have some economic news that comes out that won't be good for a few quarters. But um, obviously, people are pretty resilient. Obviously, it hit during springtime, so people are amped out to go outside, you know, eat at restaurants, uh, meet family, uh, loot stores. Uh, <laughs> apparently, we have a big, big, uh, big riders are coming out because it's nice and warm out. So hopefully, uh, that all cools down. We have, we have <laughs> thing after thing for sure. Can't can't get a break. So um, you're very funny. <laughs> I mean, I really about the looting part. I mean, that's just a whole another thing altogether. You know, right. that is. I just, I guess, I don't understand why we're not concentrating like on our community. You know, like our state, right? Like our, as a whole, all of us. I, yeah. I, I guess I, I, I have difficulty with it because. Um, we, I, you know, we, we're all the same. God made us all the same. I don't understand why we're separating uh, <laughs> ourselves apart and fighting over things that just really don't matter. We're all the same. Right. God, it's all the same. And, so, it, and, you know, it, and I know this riot thing. I didn't go into much of that because I'm not. You guys know me. I'm not. <laughs> I don't have that desire to. To, to uh, throw rocks. I had the desire uh, to uh, bring people together. Sure. And, you know, positive momentum and, uh, you know, sincerity to make people happy. All this other stuff, I mean, just angry, throwing rocks at each other. It, that's easy. That's the easy part. Right. So get along and making things happen, coming up with uh, solutions. No, that's that's true. I mean, uh, you know, obviously it's really easy to spread, um, you know, the, the the same feelings that are out there, whether it's, you know, propaganda or uh, what's currently going out there. But there's definitely a lack of people um, that are trying to make light of the situation and try to mend things versus instigate. So um, it's, it's definitely tougher to uh, bring people together and kind of, um, you know, solve this situation. But uh, I think it'll just take a little bit more time is obviously with the pandemic stuff, people losing jobs, uh, perfect storm for, uh, you know, obviously all this um, issues with the police and everything. So hopefully everybody uh, stays safe and I think it'll be hopefully over soon. <clears throat> not the not the whole issue it that's a life that's almost like a lifelong thing but but these right things definitely need to stop because um people um are getting hurt so <clears throat> so so mark uh uh so business on your side um do, do you see it picking up or or uh changing as far as it sounds like you're still going out there doing the uh, measurements and everything like that. Do, do you see, do you see the market picking up again and people getting back more into their rehabs? Cause obviously houses are coming back on the market now that people are more willing to go in the houses. Now, obviously it was still getting done by remote showings, but 
um, you know, people are getting a little bit more comfortable with comfortable with it. What what are you seeing on that side? You know, it's really it's really strange because um, for maybe a, a few days over a weekend, it was really uh, concerning that we weren't going to be able to go out and get these projects done. But all of you guys continued to work in the field, continued to get uh, these projects done, and continued to buy and sell. I, I didn't see a great deal of slowdown. Most of the suppliers, like myself, um, had material uh, problems, getting material, like we ran out of white cabinets. And, and the reason we ran out is obviously because they were sitting at the port. But right. the demand honestly didn't drop. It okay. may have gone up a little bit because a lot of people were at home and they were calling up, hey, can you come over and measure? And I'm like, sure. And, uh, you know, when I showed up with my mask and gloves on, I mean, they had some concerns because they were, <laughs> you know, kind of extreme. And I'm like, yes, but I'm really not wearing the mask for your protection. I'm wearing it for mine. Uh, you know, I'm in my late 50s and I just don't want to get sick. And like here at DeMaio, it's just Ashley and I here in Kansas City. And one of us gets sick or both of us, we're done. So we're taking precautions to make sure that we don't get sick. And uh, so... Um, the, the construction portion of it uh, may have slowed a little bit because of, we had an availability problem, but really most of you guys managed to continue in the marketplace because you guys have enough behind you, enough experience behind you to, to make those uh, numbers work. Most of the guys that I was around, including both you guys, you guys didn't slow, you guys slow down? Either one of you guys even, even slow down at all? Or maybe you picked up a little bit. I mean, I'm just, that's kind of what I saw. So a lot of people were very concerned about, like in Kansas City, things slowing down and coming to a halt, like they did on the West Coast, maybe, or the East Coast. But we didn't do that in Kansas City. Uh, our primary people were still out in the field. Uh, they were still uh, uh, framing walls and putting in electrical and plumbing and drywall and finish work. That didn't even slow down. In fact, it might have gotten busier because all of a sudden a bunch of people were available that weren't there before. Yeah, that's that's kind of nice for people that needed work done. We were lucky we didn't we weren't involved with that shutdown as much as maybe some other folks were. Agree. The supply problem was due to the fact that we didn't have material available to us. We sold what we already had in North America, and then we had this container problem. And we're still having problems with supply from a month ago because they put a 45 day hold on everything hmm. and they still are doing it. They, all this stuff coming in, they're holding it. Okay. They're not. <clears throat> Have you uh, had to change up your business model then to account for the 45 day hold, like by 1.5 X quantity? Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah, so basically, um, we're diversified enough that we have other people that we can pull from. Although there's a price in doing that, the, there's not as much profit. And the price of, of that product goes up dramatically from where we're currently at because we don't have our supply. So just for an example, like uh, Aiden is a product that we're using out of like uh, Texas. And they're about 20% higher because they're a distributor like I am. But I have a good relationship with Aiden, so we're able to uh, uh, conquer and service our customer through like our competitor. And I think one of the keys to being in business is to realize that your competitor most definitely can be your ally. And one thing I've, I've been very careful about doing is not burning bridges. So through the years, uh, we've been able to maintain a relationship with my competitor. So if I ran out of something, I could fill those holes. And so the cost of doing business went up, but our service didn't drop because of the fact that we already had the relationships set up in California or Texas or Boston where we could actually pull material 
and readily service our customer. And that's really one of the reasons we were able to survive well. Where the other guy, he, he ran out of material and he may not have had the relationship with their supply chain like we do. Uh, working with uh, uh, like um, uh, DeMaio, for example, so we're stocking, we're stocking containers, obviously, but when we run short, again, I'll buy them from Aiden, which is another manufacturer in Vietnam. But we've, we've managed to uh, come to them and ask them for help. And in the past, they've come to us and we've asked and we've helped them. And uh, that's at this level in business, that's what it's gonna take to survive something like this. You're gonna have to work together even though you're selling to the same customer, you're still going to, if you want to stay in business, you're going to have to work together. And that's one thing that I made a decision decades ago is to work together. When it hits a fan, you can take care of it. Yeah. And that's really probably what, where it makes a difference for sure. Our, pro, our profit margin drop, no question. No question. Absolutely none. I mean, we're off dramatic numbers anybody that said they weren't would not be be telling the truth um right. frustrating but we're you know like i said the, I, work together work together you guys uh in your particular case and just using uh you and michael just for an example but you guys could be considered competitors but you guys realize uh that working together you're going to be able to get more ground covered and uh, you're going to be able to come up with more solutions together because the more people you work with and the greater amount of numbers that you work with, the greater strength that you're going to have with each other. And that's what this whole deal is about. America strong, working together from America as coast to coast and then working uh, uh, community to community and then working together uh, and, and coming together on this whole thing. And, and we'll survive this just fine. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. I use you guys for example, because you guys work together really well. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely all about scaling for sure. And uh, bringing- It's not just looks, you guys oh, aren't just, sure. you guys are like <laughs> really sharp businessmen, very sharp. Most, of, most I, anybody in Kansas City that has been around either one of you guys knows that <laughs> Uh, both Michael and John are very sharp, but you know, people that are just listening to this very first time, these are people that go out of their way to help service community. That's what they do. And they're very successful at it. We just learned from the best, Mark. That's why we have you on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, <Yeah>. um, <clears throat> so, uh, going into the cabinets, uh, Michael, I'll, I'll, I'll take this one. What, uh, I know we hit about it. I know we hit about uh, something like this before on our, on our last interview, but uh, just because we have a new audience, what are what are you seeing as far as uh, current um, <clears throat> styles of cabinets, flooring that's pretty popular out there? Um, I don't know. St st it could have changed so many months from I don't know maybe three months ago. Well, is it still similar, or what are you seeing out there? Yes, it's it's uh, it's white, it's shaker, and uh, it's uh, it's bling. You know, okay. anything is is selling. White goes with anything. Uh, it can be any any color, any uh, whether it, it doesn't matter the color of the tile or the plank. John, uh, white white works, and. Uh, uh, that's what, that's what, uh, that's what's selling. It's white. Some gray, some naturals. Um, you know, we're starting to see some European doors come in, which are like a flat panel door. Uh, but it's majority of it is white and it's, uh, it, it's clean and it's got pop. Anything that pops, sells, period. And if, you, if it's white and it looks clean, you'll sell the house over that one thing. So great looking kitchen, great looking bathroom, you're gonna sell the house. If yeah. it doesn't pop, it won't sell. And if, you, if you've if you got 
uh, kind of an okay looking kitchen as opposed to something that pops, you're, you may sell the house eventually, but it's going to take a little time. You've got something that is white and it's shaker and it, and, it, and it pops and you walk in, you'll sell the house quickly. You, you won't have to worry about uh, it being on the market very long. If you look at the numbers right now, they're, they're uh, on there for like uh, 24, 48, 72 hours. <coughs> yeah, that, it's, house, that it's, house is on there longer than that. That is because as a uh, remodeler or a builder, we didn't recognize that clean lines, new cells. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I just, I was working with a client and and I've talked to other people. Uh, their offers are still going, I don't know, anywhere from four to seven K over asking. So uh, still strong, still strong for now. So that, so that's good. You know, partially obviously pent up demand and <laughs> the real estate market didn't get hit too much, probably commercial retail, obviously. Uh, and then um, commercial office buildings. So, but uh, yeah, the real estate market in general, residential market's pretty strong. <laughs> what, what, uh, what, or, uh, what, what mistakes do you see that some uh, investors might do? Like maybe they put too much money rehabbing something or not enough somewhere? Yeah, no, I, I think it's common to fall in love with the project. And that okay. that's always been a mistake of mine, you know. Uh, it's good to get the thing up to uh, speed, but when you fall into love with something, you end up putting a lot of money into it that you really don't need to put into it. It's just because you've taken, uh, you know, liking like it's going to be your house, like you're going to live there, you know, and, and not really looking at fashion. Um, you know, like a real big mistake for us in our market is like, say, putting in a natural finish uh, uh, like cabinet in a, in like a flip. And then the contractor will call six months later, literally, and I haven't sold it. And they're like, you know, I, I need to get it painted now. I guess I just didn't, I thought that natural wood sells. And you, one of us would be able to at least sit down with them and come up with some uh, resolution in color. And we wouldn't recommend the natural unless you have a specific taste and it's, you're going to keep that house and you're doing that remodel, but you wouldn't put natural like in a flip because you're not going to sell it. It's going to be like <laughs> the house free, like grandma has. <laughs> right. Think about it. When you move, when you go into an apartment, it's usually natural because it's cheap. Right. It's all particle board, MDF. It's something that, you know, I wouldn't put in my ex-wife's house, but they'll put it in that apartment because it's cheap, all price. If you're wanting to sell that thing, you want to put in something in there that'll pop, but yet uh, buying something and putting a whole bunch of money into something because you think that, uh, you know, it's, it's something that you like to do as opposed to what the market's trending. It's just a market trend and it's an easy mistake. Yeah. You buy a house, you need to, when you buy that house, you need to put like a plan together before you buy it. How much money is it going to take to get it up to where you can sell it? It's important. You buy a, a $17,000 house and it takes $70,000 to fix it and you're in a $100,000 market, it, you're not going to do well. Yeah, that, that makes you're sense. Not do well. And uh, so people will, you know, it, I think it's just a lot like bringing an inspector with you, you know, have the guy go through the house with you so you can see what you're you're looking at from an investment standpoint or calling your local uh, flooring guy or your cabinet guy, your electrician or whatever, and have him come down with you and help you determine whether this is a good value for you or not, if you don't know. And that's a big mistake. People just automatically assume that you're an expert. Trust me. The last building that I looked at from a commercial standpoint, I hired a commercial inspector you know, it's a thousand dollar investment and we didn't end up buying the property. And the reason was, is he found more problems with it than it was worth investing in. Just to get the thing up to code would have been over a million dollars. And if I would have used my heart in it, we would have uh, been in real trouble. 
because my heart said it was a great value, but I'm not the expert. The guy that's doing the inspection, or you guys are the expert. You guys put everything, put your numbers together first, and you and you try not to let your uh, your uh, uh, ego get into the thing. And I find that when you are looking at an investment and your ego gets in there, it doesn't go well. Almost right. always there's a problem. And it, you made a good point too. Um, obviously, Colin, you know, your, your local um, supplier, um, y you've put your product in a lot of places and you've seen a lot of places sell with it in it. So it's, it's a good point. Like uh, your preferences really differ from, you know, the general market masses. If, if yeah, you could go with natural wood stain if you're going to be there for a really long time. That's what makes you happy, you know, obviously put that in there. But if you're going to stay in it for another year, then you're going to sell. Then, yeah, you need to put something you, you might not like, but it's going to sell instantly on the market. And obviously kind of like a neutral, clean, popping, white type uh, cabinet like you're talking or <clears throat> maybe like um, an LVP uh, vinyl, like a, like a, um, a grayish brown, I think you're talking about, or even the grays are probably still popular. Those, those panels in the back, before we forget about those, I know, um, you know you're pretty excited about those. Um, give us a, a little snippet of those real quick before we forget. So that, that panel there, I'm going to point with my finger because, you know, it's easier to do that. Uh, <laughs> it's like White Career of the Ento Marble. It's a photograph. And uh, it's uh, a SBC, which is a stone polymer composite. And it's uh, a picture of white curra marble with a extremely aggressive wear layer on it. And it can be used like for a shower, or it could be used for a bathtub uh, surround, or it could be used for a, uh, uh, like even a pool. Uh, you can put it in water. It's 100% waterproof. And it's really economic because it's like a $500 bill and some low change, a kit, mm. you know. And we're not marking it much right now. We're kind of introducing it to the market, so to speak, from our end because we just started making it. So, you know, we're kind of on the uh, front end of this. But it's really a good idea because it – uh, if you're doing like a, a two-piece shower, uh, it can go together in an hour. I mean, there's, it's really, it goes over gypsum, it goes over dirt rock, it goes over existing tile. As long as it's flat and it's pretty clean, it goes right over it. It's easy. And, um, and there's no maintenance to it. I mean, it's literally wipe it down, you're done. Uh, investors love that, or I should say anyone in general, um, because you would tile, there's multiple areas for water to intrude obviously as it ages and stuff like that you got, one, you got one hole in the thing or maybe two depending on it or could be three uh depending on the the uh hardware you're using right but you're you're just using a uh, adhesive and sticking it on the wall yeah and it uh, uh it's impervious and i'm not saying it's bulletproof but uh literally not bulletproof well, if you look at like a, <laughs> looks at obviously marble, it's not marble, it's plastic. But if you look at something from a durability standpoint, a rental property, you can do that one time. It's going to be in there until you get sick of looking at it. 30 years from now, you're going to rip it out of there and put something else like it in there. And move it because to another not, place because it'll still be good to use. <laughs> <laughs> I... I <laughs> I don't know how many kits we've sold. We sold a lot. They're $515 for four piece kit with trim. And that's about four, three to $400 lower than any box store in the nation. There's nobody's going to be close to me. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to do that. We're doing it because we're honestly, we're trying to get it out of the marketplace. It's got a great place. Uh, and, and again, it's, uh, it's extremely durable. And it's going to look great. And we've got eight colors, just a couple colors there right now, but uh, it's extremely durable. 
we've had several home flippers in the metro put it in can't say no it looks good i've seen uh i've seen it on the website obviously i uh, see your postings um <clears throat> go ahead and give everybody your contact info website uh ways to contact you i know you, i know you got a facebook site also uh ashley obviously probably does a day to day but a lot of people don't have trouble getting contact to you yourself go ahead and let the people know uh, how to contact you it's uh, just demayo enterprises.net and uh our local number is 816-673-1546 um ashley's number is uh 660 uh 624 uh, 0584. Uh, my number is uh, 913-980-4260. You definitely want to call Ashley for an appointment. Um, you know, I'll go out and measure. Um, you know, we'll uh, make sure everything's right. We'll take a picture of the measurements, the area we're doing. We'll put it on CAD, uh, which will be 3D, and you'll uh, uh, you got you and Ashley will go through all that, make sure everything's right. They order the product, and then it'll come in in, a, in three to five days. It'll show up, and then be prepared to put it in. If you wanted it assembled, we do have some subcontractors that'll come down to Demio Enterprises and do assembly. Uh, most people, though, they'll they'll uh, have it built in the project. Uh, so it comes unassembled. You will need some experience. It won't be a DIY friendly thing. Um, if you don't know what cabinets are, there, there's no cam, there's not going to be any screws, there's no uh, uh, clips. It's, it's all uh, maple, it's all plywood, it will require glue and it re will require a staple. So it's going to be pro-built. Um, it's going to be soft closed door and drawer. Uh, it's dovetail jointed. All the everything is going to be high quality. Uh, it's not expensive because we don't mark it up. We sell a lot of volume. We're concerned about putting high quality in our customers' uh, homes, and and so we keep the the prices down because we're a direct importer. We're literally bringing it in directly and selling it to you directly. So there's no middleman between you and I. It's literally just you and I. And I would say one other thing too, John. So I didn't say anything. These panels are, are uh, back to those panels. They're 36 80 by 84. Uh, I will sell them individually. So if you want like just a couple, uh, give us a call. Let us know what you need. Um, we'll take care of it. So you can buy one or you can buy four or you can buy eight. But we'll sell them individually. Again, the box store is not going to sell them individually. You're going to have a kit. And that's cool, but that's not us. And then our flooring is either going to be glue down click or free lay and we're I, we've got enough colors to be dangerous then i would definitely call the shop make sure that you do an inventory check before you get too excited about any particular color just to make sure we have it then john of all people you know this right so when the last two couple pallets that you ordered you made sure you called ashley and confirmed stock because um you get a rude awakening sometimes when there's no material here. And then people are like, man, I don't understand. I thought you guys were a stock and distributor. Why didn't right. you that material? The answer is, is it's still a port. Right. Uh, it, in, uh, in Long Beach uh, right now, it's got your name on it, but who knows when I'm going to get it. So it's a really good idea to check. It, the ability. You know, you're, you're, you provide to a lot of people in Kansas city. You're definitely easy to work with. Um, you know, obviously, as everyone knows, Mark's all Mark's been around for for a while. Everyone trusts Mark. We've done business, with Mark, not an issue. But uh, yeah, when you when you order product, obviously you have th uh, several thousand square feet. But that's kind of the price you might pay by not ordering enough at once versus maybe ordering too much and kind of saving funds for when you do need them. That's kind of how it is. But you guys are always available. You obviously try to get it in. You, um, your timelines will be better, obviously, after the COVID stuff kind of calms down. But uh, we definitely appreciate, um, <clears throat> you know, your support in general uh, for everybody around. Um, everybody knows. I don't think M Mark, 
you you might not have a bad day or at least you don't show it. So I think everyone appreciates that. <laughs> so, everybody, everybody has. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we need, like I said, we need, uh, we definitely need more guys like you. Um, uh, we always appreciate you coming on the, 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 the Mary podcast here, uh, you know, give us an update on the market, showing what products you have, keeping us up to date on styles. And um, other than that, I think everyone got your information. We know you're super busy. We'll uh, let you get back to work. Michael, I think you said you good to go. Any last minute questions for the Mark? I, I think you covered it really well. So okay. I appreciate that. Cool. <laughs> Cool, Mark. Everyone stay safe. Drink your monsters. Um, <laughs> hopefully we'll get we'll get to the meet out meetups here soon. And uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. Thanks. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, guys. Yep, thanks.